I'm recording just so you know. Um, just to be respectful of your time, I'm just gonna do a quick welcome. Jacqueline and I decided to team up and join together to um, have this call tonight. And we have a special guest, Brad Fizjack, and he is a mindset coach, inspirational speaker, and he has his own podcast and his own course. He actually is a, well, you were a, for, a former Beachbody, Team Beachbody coach. Is your wife, and your wife is a, is she still coaching? I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. So, but, so he understands our business. He understands how important personal development and mindset are not only in everyday life, but especially in this business. I cannot tell you how much I reflect back and think about how important mindset is in this business, especially day to day. Um, especially whenever you are not only a business owner, but all the roles that you have to fulfill in your life. So um, I'm going to let Brad take it from here, but I just want to give him like a brief introduction. I don't know if Jacqueline has anything to throw in there, but we are super pumped to have him on our call. And if you guys have any questions, I'm sure at the end, he will be open to taking those. What's going on guys? Can you hear me? Is that coming through? Give me a thumbs up if I'm making noise on your end. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What is going on? Thank you so much for having me tonight. Jacqueline and Megan, I truly appreciate it and I do not take this opportunity lightly. I know that your time is something that you can't get back. I know it's late. I know you guys probably are, You just like we were talking about, have the cruise hangover. You want to pass out and go to bed and get everything back up and running for your business. But I promise you that this next hour is going to be above and beyond just freaking loaded with value. And it's going to help you master this thing, master your mindset, help you overcome any of that negative self-talk that gets in the way of you achieving incredible things in your life and your business. And that's what this is about, right? Because if your mindset is on point, you're going to crush it. But if your mindset is inconsistently on point, you're not really going to do anything with it, right? So before we get started, silence the phones, take your picture for Instagram stories now, and then like put the phones away and be fully present. Because I know you guys do the Instagram stories and all that stuff. Um, if your kids are around, put them in a closet for an hour, whatever you got to do, just be present. And I promise you it'll be worth it. And let's start with some participation. Type in the chat box. What is a really big goal that you have for 2019? Type that into the chat box right now. What's a really big goal you have for 2019? And look at the goal that you're typing in. There's a really cool recipe to make it happen. Whether it's five star, 10 star, diamond, whatever it is. Any goal you type in, there is a recipe to make it happen. Meaning someone has gone before you and done it. If it's paying off debt, if it's finding a relationship, third business center, that's a fantastic goal, right? All of these amazing things. There's a recipe, people that have gone before you, they can teach you how to do it. And you know that, right? You know your basic business building behaviors. You have two of the best leaders in the company teaching you how to do that. But something you might miss is that the way you go about using the ingredients in your recipe to get to Diamond, to open that third business center, the ingredients you use, that's what matters. That's what matters the most. Because if you have all the right ingredients for a cake, but you add the, the eggs after you put it in the oven, what's going to happen? You're not going to have a very good taste of cake, right? You can invite a million people, but if your mindset's off, you're actually going to repel them. You can have the best training for your team in the entire world, but if your mindset's off, they're not going to do anything, right? You could feel like you're setting a really, really big goal, but you're going to find that if your mindset's off, you're actually setting a goal based out of fear instead of a goal based off of who you want to become without even knowing it. You could put hours and hours and hours into a support group for your clients, but if your mindset's off, you're going to forget about inviting and nothing's going to grow and you're going to wonder why more people aren't coming to you. So my point in sharing this is that what goes on in your mind, your self-talk, your mindset is by far and above the most important piece of all of this. And you've heard that a million times. You've heard change your thinking, change your life. How many of you, how many of you have heard that cliche quote before? Change your thinking, change your life. Well, what the heck does that mean? Right? Has anyone ever taught you how to do that? Have you ever learned how to change your thinking when you're in a place when you don't really want to change your thinking? Have you ever noticed that when you feel upset or depressed or sad, you kind of want to stay upset, depressed, or sad? Or how many of you have gotten pissed off and you want to stay pissed off because it almost feels kind of good in the moment, even though you desperately want it to change? It kind of feels rewarding in that way. So you've heard that. So how do we change our thinking? When we're in a place when things are not going well, 
That's what we're going to talk about today. When you drop in rank, when you miss success club, when you're, you know, hot for one week and then hot and then cold for three weeks, right? Whatever it is, you're going to learn how to apply it. So when you hit that point, it's going to take you instead of a week or two weeks to get back on track, three minutes. That's it. Can you imagine how much your business would change if you could bounce back from a slump in three minutes instead of three weeks? How different would everything be? So where does negative self-talk come from? Where do these limiting questions we ask ourselves in our mind, why am I so fat? Why am I not enough? Why can't I do this? Why is it so much easier for my upline? Where does that stuff come from? I'm going to show you through my, a couple stories in my life where my negative self-talk came from, and I'll show you how I reverse it and turn it into an amazing tool for success. But it comes from things that you've gone through in the past. So as I go through these stories, I have a reason for sharing them with you. You don't have to relate. That's fine either way. But just try to see yourself in my story and also try to think what really caused your life to have disempowering questions because everybody has them. And if you think you don't have limiting beliefs, that is a limiting belief, by the way. So growing up, I had an emotional roller coaster of a childhood and it gave me really screwed up beliefs about how life is. And I'm curious, how many of you can relate to the topic of money stress, whether past or present? Any point in your life, type yes. If you can relate to the topic of money stress at any point in your life, if that's you, I remember just like for some context, I remember growing up, my parents would fight about money like almost every single day. There was always a screaming match, some form of we can't afford that. And they would fight all the time and I didn't know why. And I remember one time I was probably like 10 years old and my parents were having a fight about why the bank account was getting overdrawn again. And I remember thinking like, okay, why is money bad? Why do they have to fight about this? And I went up to my mom and I was like, mom, why do you guys have to fight about stupid money? And it was just another fight, right? But I just got kind of sick of it. Why did they always have to, you know, beat each other up over this, right? Over, like with words, not physical or anything. But I remember going up to her and saying that. And in that moment, she says, shut the F up, get to your room. I don't need you to talk to me right now. I don't need the opinion of a punk kid. No big deal at all. That's kind of how she was, how she kind of talked to us on a regular basis. But what was scary in that moment is my dad comes over with a soap dispenser and starts pouring soap all over my mom on her head, down her, down her back, on her neck. Like it was just terrifying as a kid. Like that's kind of traumatizing to a kid seeing your parents almost get into a physical altercation because of money. And I remember thinking to myself, did money cause this? Is it because of money that they're fighting? And from that point forward until I learned how to correct this, I just hated money. Because whenever the topic of money came up, it felt like someone was gonna get punched in the face. And that never happened. But all the, the hatred and negative energy around it made me hate and fear it. So when I started my Beachbody business six years ago, for those of you guys that don't know, I was a Beachbody coach for five years, built a five-star business, absolutely love everything about Beachbody. It led me to what I'm truly meant to do with my life. And if I wasn't doing this right now, I'd still be coaching. I absolutely love coaching, but I'm not allowed to do both, right? So, so I know what you guys go through when it comes to limiting beliefs, but you can imagine when I built, started to build my business, I wanted the 15 star. I wanted the elite title. I wanted the success club billion, all these things. I wanted it to happen, but money is bad. Do you see how that might screw with my success? If I want to go that way, but I'm held back this way. How many of you have something similar in your life? where you want something, but you're held back by some limiting belief. I needed to figure out how to get through that. And I have another limiting belief that came up along with that that was probably even stronger. And that had to do with the relationship I had with my mom. Now, like, I'm not gonna get into detail on this. This is something I can do for you guys at a different time. I do a whole other call about how to use the pain of your past to create greatness. Um, and I'll teach you guys in my course how to flip the script on this. I'll tell you guys that about that at the end. But I remember growing up, I had a really turbulent relationship with my mom. And I'm curious, how many of you have a turbulent relationship with, my, with a family member in some way, shape, or form. Maybe a, a spouse, maybe a, a parent, maybe a brother or sister. How many of you, type yes if that's you, where you have a limiting relationship or turbulent relationship in some way, shape, or form? Well, I remember my mom and I used to fight about everything. And after I graduated college and ended up like moving out and all that stuff, anytime I would come home, even like growing up, anytime I would come home, it was always like walking on eggshells. It was always like, I never knew which version of mom I was going to get. And I love my mom. I've forgiven her for all the pain of my past. That took a lot of work. It, like I had to go through and figure out how to do that. But I remember having this one memory drilled into my head like yesterday. And it happened all the time where I get home from school. And sometimes it was a, hey, sweetie, how, how are you doing? But most of the time it was a, well, shut the fuck up and go away. I don't need you around me right now. It was a, 
you know, I don't need the opinion of a punk kid. Like, why are you even here? Right. And sorry if there's kids around, I'm just being totally real with you guys. Right. I just like, I could not stand that. And I didn't know why she didn't love me. And obviously she did. Obviously she did love me. I didn't realize it in the moment what was actually going on and that she was deeply hurting. I didn't realize it at the time, but I remember thinking, why am I not enough for her? Like, why aren't I worthy of her love? And I, I grew up basically craving validation, craving acceptance from other people. And whenever someone wouldn't accept me, I would literally change who I was just so they would like me. And so I never felt worthy, never felt like I was enough. So you can imagine when I started building my Beachbody business, I wanted the 15 star diamond ring. I wanted to create mass impact in the world. I wanted to help all these people, but I'm not enough. Do you see how that might screw with my ability to do it if I wanna go there, but I'm held back there. And you might have a different story. Money might be fine, you might believe that you're enough, but you have limiting beliefs in some way, shape, or form. What is your story? Where can you relate? What limiting belief or beliefs do you have now because of something that happened years ago that you haven't forgiven or changed the meaning to yet? Because when you're little or when you go through a failure, you are incredibly impressionable. And it's in those times that your belief about yourself and your abilities start to take shape. So when I started my, my network marketing business six years ago, it didn't matter how many people I invited. It didn't matter how many social media posts I put up. It didn't matter how many team calls or training calls I created for my team. It didn't matter. I just felt stuck. How many of you feel stuck in some way? Like you know you're meant to do big things, but you don't know why you can't break through. And even if you do happen to hit these levels of success, you gotta feel hollow and empty inside. Like, well, now what? And how many of you ever experienced that? We're gonna break through that tonight. So I had to figure out how to fix that. And I went on this journey of changing my entire life. I ended up investing tens of thousands of dollars into coaches and seminars and courses and all these things to learn how to break through this stuff and how to silence the negative self-talk, how to believe in myself, how to believe that I was more than enough. And it led me to who I am now. It led me to the creation of my business, all this stuff. And so I tell you this because when I tried to build a business, the overwhelming amount of negative self-talk and the lack of belief in the secret obstacles that I didn't even realize were there stopped me in my tracks. So we can't go over the entire system of how to overcome that in one hour, but if you take this really seriously and you take a lot of notes, you're gonna learn three of the major steps that I took to exploding my entire life. So number one, write this down in your notes. Number one, your thoughts are always the reason. Your thoughts are always the reason. What, the, what does that mean? Well, the first thing you can do is change the way you think. Obviously, you've heard that a million times. But I'm talking about rewiring the way that you naturally respond to challenge in your life. So let me back up a little bit so you can see what I mean. You start to tell yourself these stories, right? Money is bad. Building a team is hard. My teammates won't do anything. It's so much easier for my upline. I'm too fat. I'm not enough. I'm too broke. I can't afford to go to Summit. Whatever it is, if you say that stuff enough times, you start to believe it, don't you? Have you ever been, how many of you have done this? Have you ever been at a party with your friends over the years or maybe even on the cruise this last week where you're there with them, you're having a good time and to sound cooler than you actually are, you exaggerate a story just so you get more laughs or more attention. How many of you have done that? Don't lie, lie about that, lie about other shit too. I do that too with my buddies and I need to change it, but I, I seriously still do that sometimes, right? Like you exaggerate something so you get more attention or more laughs and so, and so then the next time you're back together with them, you exaggerate the story again, only with more conviction, with more belief. And now you find yourself five years into the future sharing these, this story, and you don't even know what part is BS or not, right? You go, wait, is that actually true? You don't even know. Why? Because you repeated it to yourself over and over and over again. That's what happens with negative self-talk. Right? When you repeat it to yourself over and over and over again, you actually believe that it's true when it's not. It's just a story you've made up in your mind. And it, it sabotages your whole life. And you go through life believing this. It creates inner conflict. It changes the way you lead your life and your business. And like, how many of you sometimes feel like things are forced on a regular basis, whether it's a team or a relationship or your bank account or whatever it is, you feel like you're forcing things sometimes. You feel like you can't break through no matter how hard you try. And even if you keep hitting success club, it doesn't work and you don't know why. So obviously to change this, you need to change your beliefs. And we'll talk about how to do that in just a second, but here's what's most important. You have to believe that you're enough before the evidence of your business will ever say that you're enough. It's so important that you understand that. You have to believe that you're an amazing leader before you are ever going to have a big team. 
You have to believe that you're worthy of greatness if you're ever going to create it. And that's hard to do when the evidence of your business is saying that you're not. So how do you change this? You can change your beliefs by changing your questions. Write this down. Better questions will change your entire life. Better questions eliminate negative self-talk. Better questions will explode your business. How many of you have ever been a point, at a point in your life where you're trying to convince yourself that you can hit a big goal, but it's like you want to believe you can do it, but you almost like already know you can't. You know what I'm talking about? Like if you do a goal setting workshop or a vision board exercise and you create these amazing things like debt free or 100K or 10 star or whatever it is, like these big dreams, put them on a vision board or put them on a, a sheet of paper and you're looking at it, it would be absolutely amazing. It would change your entire world to hit these big goals. But you have that little voice back here that like goes, <laughs> You're never gonna do that, right? You know what I'm talking about? That little voice that just kind of laughs at you, just whispering doubt and insignificance into your subconscious mind saying, there's no way you're ever gonna do it. Because the reality is guys, if you haven't hit your goals, it's because you don't believe you can get to them. And that's okay, I'll teach you how to break through in just a second. But you know that, you know that voice, right? You know what I'm talking about. Just saying you're never gonna get there. We have to change that thinking. And we can't do it all in an hour, but here's a start. So first, what's thinking? Thinking is nothing more than the process of asking yourself a question. That's all thinking is. See, what did you just do? You, you went, is that true? That's your thinking. You're thinking about what thinking is. So you're asking yourself a question. And if you ask yourself bad questions or negative thinking, you get really bad answers. If you ask yourself great questions or positive thinking, you get really great answers. A bad question might be, why am I so stuck? A great question would be, why am I always overdrafting my, or a, 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 sorry, that's a bad question. A bad question might be, why am I so stuck? A bad question might be, why am I always overdrafting my bank account? A bad question might be, why is my relationship so challenging? Or why is this so much harder for me? Or why can't I get it right? Or why is it so much easier for my upline? Those would be bad questions. Great questions would be, why am I worthy of greatness? Why am I so kind to myself every day? Why am I an amazing leader? Those would be great questions. The mistake I made is I thought I just had to keep hitting success club. And yes, you do have to keep hitting success club. That's your benchmark to your business growing. But there comes a point, how many of you have ever noticed this? Whenever you try to hit success club consistently, you either consistently miss or even if you hit it, your business still doesn't grow and you don't know why. How many of you ever faced that point where your business still isn't growing and you just feel stuck in some way? So let's break this down a little bit. And this might make a little bit more sense in just a second. Look around the room that you're in right now and count the number of things that you can find that are red. Ready, go. Count the things that are red. Look for red, look for red, look for red. Count things that are red. Look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Look for red, 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 look for red. Keep looking for red, look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Count the things that are red. Keep looking for red, look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Cool. Hold up your hands. How many things did you find that were red? Found five by Megan. Let's see what else we got. Three, 15, amazing. 10 by Jennifer, seven, Sophia, awesome. That's great guys, but question, how many things did you find that were blue? No idea. Why? Because you weren't looking for it. But check this out. Look around the room and count the number of things you can find right now that are blue. Here you go, look for blue. Look for blue, 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 look for blue. Oh my gosh, there's so much beach body blue everywhere. Look for blue, keep looking for blue, look 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 for blue. Holy cow, there's so much blue. Hold up your hands or type in the chat box. How many more things did you find that were blue? And how many of you even saw green and pretended it was blue just so you would feel successful in this exercise? So why do i bring this up when you focus on one you can't find the other when you focus on the other one you can't find the original one right so when you focus on what you don't want red you'll never find the dream blue so when you focus on what you don't want those are the seeds of doubt and skepticism and pain those thoughts will grow in your mind like weeds it's natural for you to think negatively by the way why is this remember the quote jim Rohn said he said stand guard at the gates of your mind or weeds will grow automatically. What does that mean? That means that unless you program your mind with blue, it will automatically find red. And the reason for that is because your brain doesn't give a crap if you're happy or not. Your brain doesn't care if you hit your goals. Your brain doesn't care if you're happy or your brain doesn't care if you're in a great marriage or hit 15. Sorry, your brain doesn't care. Your brain's only job is to make sure you survive. That's it. 
So at any moment in time, it's looking for what's wrong. It's looking for what to protect you from. So when you set a really big goal, your brain's going, whoa, 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 don't go after that big goal. That might mean failure. That might mean rejection. Think about it. Millions of years ago, you weren't worried about setting big goals in a business. You were worried about staying alive. You were worried about the tiger hiding in the bushes that was going to eat your baby. You were worried about how you were going to survive like the ice age or whatever the hell it was, right? Like you, you had real primal fears. And now we equate the same amount of fear to inviting as we did to a tiger attack. It doesn't make sense, right? So our brains are wired to protect us from pain. So unless we reprogram it with what we want, we will automatically find what we don't want. So if you're ever an ask to yourself on a regular basis, it's just your brain doing its job. That's it. So give yourself a little bit of a break. It's going to be okay. So let's apply this to your business. Ask yourself this right now. Why is my business so hard to build? Just try that. Why is this business so hard to build? Ask yourself that right now. What happens? How motivated do you feel when you ask yourself a crappy question like that? Not motivated at all, right? And even if you read all these self-help books, it doesn't change the fact you have that voice in your head that says you're not enough. I shared a couple stories a minute ago about where my limiting questions came from. What are yours? Remember mine, why is money hard to make or why is money bad and why am I not enough? What are your limiting questions? Like maybe some of these will trigger some of that, but how many of you have ever said, type yes if this is you? Why am I so stuck? Why aren't my teammates doing anything? Why don't people want to join me? Why is it so hard to lose weight? Why am I so broke? Why can I never catch a break? Why is it so much easier for my upline? Why don't I know enough people? Will I always be this stuck? How many of you have asked yourself negative questions like that on a regular basis? And it doesn't feel very good, does it? I bet those questions lead to a lot of pain, a lot of procrastination, and there you are looking at your life so frustrated with the results you're getting. And no matter how much someone tells you they believe in you and that you can have success, it doesn't change the fact that you have that little voice that says you can't do this. You know what I'm talking about? Or am I crazy? So how do we break through it? Well, when you set a goal, your dominant beliefs determine if that goal comes true. And goal setting, guys, is nothing more than the process of trying to create a new reality as opposed to your current reality. That's all goal setting is. And the gap between where you are and where you want to be is whether you're looking for red or looking for blue. Right? That's it. And until that language is consistently blue, consistently focusing on what you want, the dream, you're going to find yourself stuck having a really hard time. And I know this because I lived it in my business. And another example in real life, how many of you guys have ever been in a tough spot financially, but then you decided that you really wanted to buy a car? And let's say you talk to your husband or wife about buying a car and you say, we're going to buy a 2017 Ford Fusion. What happens when you decide to buy that Ford Fusion? You see it everywhere. Every stoplight, every street corner, every parking lot, everywhere. And guess what happens? You own that shit in a week or two. You find a way to make it happen. Even if you overdraft the bank account, even if things are tight, you find a way, right? So until, same thing applies to your mind and your business. Unless you're focusing on the dream consistently and you're deciding that's what you want, you're never going to get there because you're programming your mind with red. Something you need to understand is that your entire life can be changed by asking more empowering questions. Your brain is a Google search engine. It will answer whatever you type into the search bar. But if you don't intentionally program it with something more empowering, it's automatically going to type in something disempowering. So what if you intentionally reverse it? What if you intentionally plug your mind with what you want? You're going to get an answer anyways, right? So you might as well ask it a question that leads to a better life. When you say, why is it so hard to build my team? What does your brain do? Finds all the reasons why you can't do this. So when you sit down to work, you're going, why aren't more people messaging me about my challenge group instead of hustling to get there? And when you sit down to work, you don't send the invite, you just scroll Facebook, right? That's what happens when your brain is wired on why is it so hard? And what's crazy is that there's amazing people and opportunities and blue around you every single day, but you won't even notice them because you're focusing on why it's so hard. Self-sabotage steps in. You won't even notice the mom that's standing next to you in the grocery store checkout line that has high blood pressure or high cholesterol, and you could literally save her life with Shakeology. You won't even notice her. You won't even notice the parent that lives next door that has no idea how they're going to pay for their kid's college education, and you have their freedom trapped in your mouth right now. 
you won't even notice them because you're too focused on why it's so hard. Red, right? When you find look for one, you won't even notice the other. So let's change it up. Ask yourself this. Why is it so easy to rank advance this month? Or if you're brand new, why is it so easy to hit Emerald by tomorrow? What happens? You go, oh, it's only two people. Hey, that's John and Susie. I'll be Emerald by tomorrow. No problem. They'll definitely sign up, right? Whatever it is, you start to focus on the people you, you can reach out to, the sacrifices you can make. All these creative ideas start to flow to you and you figure out how you can build your business. Can you imagine if you flood your mind with this every single day, not just for your business, but for your whole life? And here's the key. You don't even need to have an answer. You don't even need to have an answer to the question that you ask. You just need to live in a blue question that leads you to the life that you want. Because when you know what you want and why you want it, the how always shows up for you. I guarantee you when these two amazing people started their businesses, they had no freaking clue how they were going to do it. They just looked for blue. That's all it was. They looked for blue and they created it. So always remember that how will reveal itself. Every problem you face is just a blue question you haven't asked yet. That's it. So for your life and your business, your homework coming out of here in half an hour is to write out all of the disempowering questions you ask yourself on a regular basis. All, for all categories of life, this is a life coaching call, guys. This is not just business. So for all categories of life, bank account, marriage, everything, um, relationships, everything, write down everything that's disempowering on a sheet of paper. You're going to get a ton of them, 25, 50, 75 negative questions that you ask yourself on a regular basis. Why am I so stuck? Why am I not pretty enough? Why am I so fat? Whatever it is, write that down, write all of them down. And what you're going to do is you're going to flip those empowering questions on their head. You're going to, or disempowering questions on their head into the empowering alternative. You're going to turn it into why is it so easy to blank? Why is my business booming? Why is it so easy to lead my team? Why am I a great leader? Why am I more than enough? Why am I worthy? Those would be great empowering questions and you're gonna flood your mind with those questions every day. Two questions changed my entire life and I still ask myself these every single day. Number one, why am I so kind to myself today? I ask myself that every single day and number two, why am I worthy of living an amazing life? Because life gets 100% easier if you are 1% nicer to yourself. 100% easier. It becomes cake to do this when you actually love your life. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna flood your mind with this. Remember, if you look for blue, you won't even notice red. And when you look for red, you can't even notice blue. So you're gonna give your brain like no chance at all to present its natural red to you. You're gonna flood it with blue. My wife probably thought I was freaking crazy because I recorded these questions on my phone and I listened to them while I slept at night with headphones in my ear. Like just disclaimer, don't choke yourself in a headphone cord. And like, I would listen to them while I'm in the shower, when I did the dishes, when I took the dog for a walk, I would listen to them on a regular basis. I flooded my mind with blue, so it didn't even have an opportunity to find red. Does that make sense? How many of you guys are parents? Type yes or raise your hand if you're a parent. Okay, awesome. What if you had an alarm that went off on your phone five minutes before your kids got home from school or five minutes before they woke up from a nap that said, why is it so easy to be a patient and loving mother today? What if that was a question you asked yourself five minutes before they woke up or before they went to bed? How would their entire life change from one question? Because you were more present with them. Because you didn't let the stressors of the day get in the way of how you parent them. Can you imagine how their life would drastically change forever? Or how many of you guys are married or in a relationship? Raise your hand. Okay. What if you had the question pop up on your phone five minutes before your spouse got home from work or before you got home from work that said, why is it so easy to fall in love with my spouse again today? Can you imagine how your relationship would explode? Everything would change because you wouldn't let the stresses of the day dictate how you approach them. You would take control and full responsibility for your life. Guys, your life will change if you do this. It's not a matter of if, it will. 100% guarantee. You're programming your mind differently. This is how you start to wire those disempowering beliefs into empowering beliefs. <laughs> nice, Jacqueline. Uh, that's what you do, and that's how you change it. But is this one mindset strategy helpful, guys? Think you can use this in your life, in your business? Can you use this? Okay, awesome. I have two more for you guys. Number two, write this down. Your problem is not the problem. 
How you face your problem is the problem. Your problem is not the problem. How you face your problem is the problem. What does that mean? Well, how many of you have found yourself going for really big goals, but every time you do, it's like they're evading you. Like just out of reach every time. It's like they're flirting with you a little bit, right? It's like just out of reach, just out of reach, just out of reach. You're going, what the heck? I'm doing all the things. Or maybe this is you. How many of you have gone after big goals and then gotten to the big goal and gone, well, now what? and you feel hollow, empty success, right? Where you hit elite and you feel like it's nothing. When you hit five star and you're going, well, what now? When you hit million club and you're going, well, cool, but what's next? There's a reason for this, guys. There's a reason. It's because you are emotionally attached to your goals. In some way, shape, or form, you are saying, I'll be happy when I get to my goals. And when you do that, you actually push your goals away from you. Now, don't take that to mean that you shouldn't be excited about your goals. You absolutely should be excited about your goals. Get your hopes up. Be super pumped up and passionate about them. But when your happiness is dependent on a goal, you actually make that goal so much harder to achieve. And even if you do happen to stumble upon success, it's going to feel like nothing. So how many of you struggle with that on a regular basis? When you think that way and you come up short, how do you feel? And by the way, you're going to come up short sometimes. You're going to miss goals sometimes. That's okay. But how do you feel if that's you and you come up short? You feel horrible, right? Like your self-worth takes a little bit of a hit. And let me guess, it, like, it leads to procrastination, compounding negative self-talk over and over and over again. All these negative stories are amplified in your mind, starting to believe that you're not good enough when in reality it's BS, but you still accept it because it's all that goes on in your head. When you can see your challenges just as a blue question, not, but not being responsible for your happiness, the challenges get way easier. And huge important note here, guys, and this is the overarching focus of everything that I teach, and you need to understand this point because most people miss it. Business and success do not cause happiness unless you're already happy. Business and success do not cause happiness unless you're already happy. Happiness is what will bring you success. Happy, learning how to be happy and learning how to appreciate the journey and the challenge is how you overcome the challenge. I didn't get that. Most people don't. It's why I stayed stuck. Like, it's so important that you grasp that because a lot of people view where they are right now as wrong. I should be diamond. I should be at success club. I should be 10 star. I should be at this level of my bank account. I should be in this type of relationship. Whenever you do that and you should all over yourself, it doesn't feel very good. Whenever your life conditions don't match up with how you think it should be, it's a, it's a recipe for being disempowered. Once you realize that you're exactly where you need to be right now to learn what you need to learn, all of a sudden, you start to find the answers to how to get to where you want. But when you say, I shouldn't be here, you literally push away the lesson that's changed, that will change your entire life. This is why Sean T always talks about how if you want to create, uh, if you want to lose weight, you have to love your body as is because that's all you've got, right? So why hate the vessel that's going to get you to where you want to be? It doesn't make sense. So what we need to do is realize that success comes after happiness, it's so important to grasp that. Learning how to be happy as your default setting. Like, could you imagine if you were this annoyingly happy all the time? Like, how would life change? Everything would be different. So write this down. Seeing your current good is the fastest way to increase more good. What does that mean? Well, step into the common sense corner for a second. If I don't ask you to believe anything, whatever you believe is fine. Just play ball with me here. If you're God, the universe, whatever you believe in, and you have person A and person B, down on earth. And person A is that person that's going, this sucks, man. I'm not at my goals yet. I'm still 50 pounds overweight. I have no energy. It's raining outside. I mean, traffic's going to be crappy. My husband's probably going to annoy me again today. My kids won't shut the F up. All these things, right? The person that focuses on red, the person that focuses on how they never have enough, how they're super stressed all the time, and how it's just too crazy and too stressful. And they don't get how happy people can be so happy. That's person A. Person B is that person that goes, you know what? I'm going through a divorce right now. And I'm so excited for how it's leading me to become closer with my kids. Or, oh my gosh, I'm 100 pounds overweight. And I'm so excited that I joined uh, Megan's challenge group. 
and I'm learning how to lose that weight and eat healthy and take Shakeology and do the 2B mindset and all these incredible things that would get me there. And oh my gosh, I just signed up to build a business. I overdrafted my bank account yesterday, but I know that investing in myself is how I break through that. Or the person that goes, you know what? It is so cool to be here on this like planet. There's, there's these little bees that fly around outside. And if you get too close to them when you go outside in the summertime, they sting you. It's incredible. They have so much courage and such a cool place to be. I love this place. So I'm obviously making crap up, but you get the point, right? If you're God, the universe, whatever you believe in, step into the common sense corner. Are you going to give more to the person that's complaining about having less? Or are you going to give more to the person that loves everything they already have, even the challenges? Seeing your current good, including the challenges, is how you increase more good. When you view where you are right now as perfectly right, that's when you start to get further in life. So what's awesome about this one skill is that it means you don't need to work nearly as hard for exponentially better results. Because instead of slamming down on the gas pedal saying, I need to get to success, I need to get to success, I can't be happy until I get there, and you're slamming down the gas pedal, your tires are screeching, smoke's going everywhere, your death grip of the steering wheel, all these other cars are flying by you on the highway to success, and people start at the same time as you, they're crushing diamond, you're feeling like crap, you don't know why you're stuck on that highway, you realize the only reason you're not going anywhere is just because your emergency brake is on. That's it. That's all it is. You just got to release the emergency brake of your life. You don't need to push harder. You just need to let go of what's stopping you. Most people try to climb this big mountain of success saying they'll be happy when they get to the top of a mountain. Like put your goals and dreams on top of a mountain for a second. The problem with that of saying I'll be happy when I get to diamond or when I get to five star or when I open up that next business center or whatever it is or when I get to million club. The problem with that is that it's the same thing as trying to climb a mountain with a blindfold on. Because when you do it, you're going to trip, you're going to fall, you're going to break an ankle, you're going to lose the trail. It's going to take you way longer to get up to the top. And even if you get up to the top, you're not going to see any of the beauty around you. It's going to feel hollow and empty, and you're not going to know why. And you're going to feel so stuck because you just worked your butt off. But even if you achieve success, it feels like nothing. So what if you just take that blindfold off? What if you decide to love every part of this hike, the ups and the downs, the valleys and the peaks? What if you take water breaks when you need to? What if you have more fun and appreciate the scenery and the wildlife and you just follow the trail? All of a sudden, every part of life, life becomes beautiful and the top becomes so much more rewarding because you followed the trail life gave you and you can see everything up there. And have, how many of you guys have gone hiking out west? When you go hiking, you're trying to climb a mountain, is it always a straight shot to the top? Nope. It's up and down, twists and turns, going down and up everywhere. Finally, you get there. Why do you stay on the trail? Because you just trust that it's going to lead you to the top, right? You just have faith that it's leading you to where you're meant to go. You're not viewing the trail as wrong. You're staying on the trail because it's been paid before you and people know the way, right? So if you live that way and you become committed to reaching the top, super pumped up about what it's going to be like up there and committed to loving the climb, so committed instead of attached, when you live that way, even if things go downhill, away from that peak, even if things go downhill, AKA a coach quits, return order, you miss success club, you drop in rank, isn't it still a really good thing? Because you learn something instead of hate something. And when you learn something instead of hate something and you just keep following the trail, isn't it just so much more easy and fun and less like tight and stressed all the time, it just feels so much better, doesn't it? And it just makes living this way so much easier. And guess how that comes off in your invites, in your Facebook posts, instead of being de like desperate, saying I need success to happen now. And like that vibe, people's bullshit meter is so high guys, they can tell if you're forcing things. So what if that changed tonight? And what if you do this, for the growth you experience along the way, not the outcome. Like what if you do it for the person you become? What if you choose to do your four vital behaviors for the person you become? That means that any result you get from your efforts becomes a pretty amazing thing because it's no longer the outcome that's causing you stress. It's the growth that's causing you happiness.
every part becomes beautiful. So that feeling you have in your heart where you have to force yourself to act and it feels uncomfortable, that's going to melt away so quickly, guys. What if it went away and you just became alive again and on fire again? Like how would everything change? Living this way makes success so much easier. And I can't do it all in one hour and teach you how to do that in one hour. I'll tell you about an opportunity at the end of this where you can learn how to do that. But I do have one final tip that will make living this way so much easier. You guys have time for one more. It might go like three minutes over or so. But guys, I'm telling you, this next one can change your entire life. It can change everything for you. So I call this the secret sauce. You might know this as genuine gratitude. And some of you guys are going, ah, gratitude, yeah, cool, whatever. Like I'm willing to bet right now that gratitude is a business tool. Gratitude is a success tool. Gratitude is a marriage tool. Gratitude is a parenting tool. Gratitude is a wealth tool. And if you haven't experienced how that is, it means you haven't practiced gratitude regularly enough. And by the way, I do not mean the bullshit type of gratitude where you complain about what's going on all day long and then write three happy things in a journal to feel better. That is not gratitude. If you actually feel the gratitude from writing those things down, then yeah, that's gratitude, absolutely, 100%. But if you do it just to check another box, you're not doing anything for yourself. So how do we feel actual gratitude? Well, first, we need to realize like why it's important, and it's the fact that it's impossible to feel any sort of pain when you're grateful. Literally impossible. You cannot feel anxiety and gratitude simultaneously. You cannot feel depression and gratitude simultaneously. You cannot feel any disempowering emotion that stops your business from growing when you are grateful. It's like trying to be sad and jumping up and down in the mirror naked. It will not work, right? You'll be laughing at yourself. So pain is coming. There's going to be something in your life that's coming that will cause you pain. A coach quits, you get a return order, you drop in rank, whatever, whatever it is. Even something as extreme as a death in the family, right? That will happen. Pain is guaranteed. Suffering from that pain is your choice. It's up to you. It's optional but it can only be solved with real gratitude. When you are genuinely grateful, remember seeing your current good, looking for blue is the fastest way to increase more good. You see how all these are tying together. Opportunities and things and situations and solutions fly to you when you love the life you already have. So let's have some perspective because that's sometimes the easiest way to realize how great things are. You hear the term abundance get thrown around in my industry all the time. What does abundance mean? It means that you're so grateful for the life you already have and you're super pumped about what you're gonna create next. That's abundance. What's scarcity? It means where I'm at right now is not okay, and I'm afraid I'm never gonna get there. That's scarcity, that's it. Like success is limited for other people than you, right? So let's have some perspective, think about this. You're watching a video about mindset from anywhere in the world, the UK, Canada, the US, wherever it is, you probably have a hoodie on or you're in a safe house or the heat or the AC is on, depending on where you're at in the country. You're probably wondering what you're gonna have for a date night this week. You're probably focusing on how you can give a good April Fool's joke to your kids, whatever it is. You're probably gonna take your kids to the doctor to get treated for medical care. You can probably take your dog to the vet to get treated for hot spots on their arm. And some of you are gonna turn on your Apple TV after this call and watch Marie Kondo's tidying up or Friends or Breaking Bad or whatever your show of choice is, and most of you will take that for granted. When someone's going to literally kill themselves in the next 40 seconds, just take that in for a second. Someone's going to end their own life in the next 40 seconds. There is a mother out there who has no idea how she's going to feed her kid, and that baby is going to start it up tonight. There are people out there injecting needles into their arms to cope with pain when there are countries that live in communism. When most of the world, two thirds of the world lives on $900 a year, $2.50 a day. If you are broke, you are not broke. You are rich beyond measure. If you have trouble paying your bills, you are so abundantly wealthy. If you're in the bottom 1% of this country, you're in the top 1% of the world. You're so accustomed to miracles happening around you every single day that we don't even see them as miracles anymore. We probably view miracles as scarce and don't appreciate how literally everything around you was once an idea. These teams were once ideas. That's all it was. It was a that'd be cool if, right? That's all it was for these guys. 
which proves you can create miracles any second that you want to. We have the tendency to let go of gratitude and make it a rule that we can only feel happy if the next thing happens. And just like we talked about a minute ago, that is setting you up to suffer in life. If you can take away any single sentence from this entire talk, it's the following sentence, and it's so important that you write it down, plaster it above your computer, whatever you got to do. It's so important that you understand this concept. And if you learn how to adopt this into your life, success becomes easy. You ready for it? Nothing has to happen for you to be happy. Nothing. Absolutely nothing needs to happen in order for you to feel good. And as long as you structure your way where there's a rule about what will allow you to be happy or a way where your happiness is dependent on what someone says or does or a goal, you are never going to be fulfilled the way you, the way you desire. Even if you have success, you could be winning at life and feel like you're losing. Because the scorecard you're using to measure success is unfair because it only allows you to feel happy if the next thing happens. An achievement without gratitude for the struggle is total failure. Total failure. You are breathing. You are alive. That should be enough to smile about. And if you're smiling, guys, business gets so much easier. You know those people that are smiling and just like, Kim Fitzpatrick is a beautiful example of this. You know she just radiates energy and you feel her through what she shares and just her personality. And it seems easy for her, right? She works just as hard, but she's magnetizing people to her, right? A lot of you have these, these high expectations of your spouse, your kids, your team, your volume, your sales. And when your life conditions don't match up with how you think it should be, you get really frustrated, right? Like you have these rules of what needs to happen in order for you to be successful. You gotta let that go. Gratitude is one of the ways to do that along with many other strategies that I can teach you guys. But your view of life literally determines your entire, your entire future. So every single day, if you can condition this into who you are and wake up with gratitude, solve challenges with gratitude and go to bed with gratitude, business is going to get really, really easy, really, really quick. You're talking to someone right now, guys, this is how I know I can help you. It's, I went through a period of time where I knew what I wanted so bad, but I'd find myself on the couch like desperately wanting my life to change and having every tool I needed at my disposal to do it, but I couldn't get myself to act. It was like my laptop was staring at me going, dude, change your, change your life. You have everything you need, but I couldn't do it. I, I got in these like bouts of depression where I was watching Netflix for like four days a week, wishing life would be different, but I couldn't get myself to act. And then it was like this perfection and guilt loop I went through where I got really excited from a team call one day. And then I acted for two days really, really well. And I did my invites. I did everything right perfectly, right? And then the next day, I wasn't as motivated. And so I wouldn't act perfectly, and I'd feel guilty. And I would wonder why I didn't do it. I felt so guilty and down about it that I needed to do it perfect again. It was perfection, guilt, perfection, guilt, perfection, guilt, this crazy eight of emotions. And it led to depression, sadness, sitting on the couch, wanting my life to change. And even worse, I mean, like, type yes if this makes sense. I was pissed off at myself that I was depressed. I was pissed off at myself for being less than I could be. I was pissed off at myself for knowing I was meant for more, but living in mediocrity. And now, fast forward, after overcoming this, I'm naturally this annoyingly happy all the time. And yeah, there are still days once in a blue moon where I get the whole woe is me feeling, right? That happens to everyone. But this is my default setting. And I can get out of that woe is me feeling in two minutes instead of two weeks. Can you imagine how life would change if you could do that? In fact, what I learned from one of my mentors, Tony Robbins, big Tony Robbins fan here, is that you can solve any problem in your life or your business in two, three minutes using gratitude or find direction to solving that problem in two, three minutes. So what I'm about to take you through is a process that you don't need to understand. It's a journey you're going to go on. You're going to feel certain things. It's going to be really, really powerful. This is what I learned from Tony Robbins. I do not take credit for this. Um, this is his work, but I, I just need to share it with you because it changed my life. So get somewhere where you can allow yourself to feel totally vulnerable, any full spectrum of emotions you can possibly think of. Sadness, happiness, whatever it is. Get yourself where you can allow yourself to feel that. Tell the kids to go in a different room if you need to. Exit the kitchen if there's a bunch of people in there. Just be fully present for this. And if you know from being on video, you're not going to play all out, turn your video off. Actually turn your video off. Like do this for you. Like this, this can change your life if you allow it to. So think of something in your life that stresses you out on a scale of one to 10, like a, like a seven or higher. 
something that you don't know how to solve, something that's unfinished business or something that you haven't been able to break through, something that feels super stressful and you just don't know where to go with it or don't know what to do and it's causing so much emotional weight in your heart. Raise your hand if you have your stressor, no only for you guys are on video, but raise your hand if you have your stressor just so I can see. Cool, awesome. Get somewhere where you can allow yourself to feel the emotions and close your eyes. Shake your body out. Sit up nice and tall. And take both your hands, trust me on this, and physically put them on your heart. Physically put your hands on your heart. And as you breathe, breathe deep into your heart. Imagine the air actually flowing in your nose, through your heart, and back out your mouth. Another big deep breath in your nose, through your heart, back out your mouth and keep breathing that way feel all the energy going in to your heart keep breathing that way keep feeling it big deep breath in your nose through your heart and back out your mouth and notice how your breath has already calmed your mind and take a second and just focus on how grateful you are for this heart that's beating in your chest right now your heart beats 100,000 times a day without you having to do anything for it, as long as it beats you live. It's a gift, you didn't have to buy this heart, you didn't have to earn it, something thought enough of you to give you this amazing gift of life the moment you were born. You have inherent worth, because this heart is beating in your chest right now. Think of everything that it led to, think of how you feel fully alive because of this. Think of who you've been able to meet, what you've been able to accomplish, what you've been able to see and do and feel in your life because this heart beats even when you sleep. It's the most amazing gift you have ever received in your life. So take a second and just feel so overwhelmingly grateful for this heart beating in your chest right now. And now go to a memory in your life. What's a memory? A moment from any stage any time, could be 10 years ago, could be today, doesn't matter, just a moment that you can feel unbelievably deep feelings of gratitude for. Is it when you said, I do, when you had your first baby? What's that moment for you? And step back into that moment like you're there. Don't just see from the outside. Relive it. Breathe the same way you did then. Feel the same emotions you felt then. See what you saw then now. Like it's happening, feeling so grateful right in front of your eyes and breathe that memory into your heart right now, feeling so grateful, and know that this moment is within you, this feeling is within you, whenever you wanna feel it. So take that in and breathe that into your heart right now, and now go to a second memory. What's a second memory in your life that you can feel unbelievably deep feelings of gratitude for? What's that moment for you? Step back into that one like you're there, breathe, the same way you did then. See what you saw then. Feel what you felt then now. Feeling so grateful and take that memory and breathe that memory in your heart. Feeling so much appreciation, so much joy, so much gratitude. But what about a coincidence? What's a coincidence in your life? Something that you didn't make happen, but it happened. You were in line at Starbucks and you met the love of your life. You didn't mean to get pregnant, but now you have an amazing family. You got a message on Facebook. Now you're creating your dreams. What's that wonderful coincidence for you? And think of everything it led to in your life. Think of why your life is such a blessing now because of that beautiful gift. And take that into your heart and think of everything it led to. Think of why your life is so much more enriched because of that. Was that actually a coincidence or were you being guided the entire time? It's so incredibly beautiful when you realize that life is always happening for you and not to you, always. Even the problems, even the stressors, they're gifts because they lead to greater growth, greater aliveness, a more elevated version of you. So take a second and breathe that coincidence into your heart right now, feeling so appreciative and take it all in. And now stack these moments on top of each other right now. Stack that first memory, that second memory, that coincidence. Stack it all on top of each other. See them flash right before your eyes again. Feel the overwhelmingly grateful feelings for your heart beating 100,000 times a day. And now try to triple the amount of appreciation you have for your life right now. Think of how it's such a gift that you're still breathing, that you're still here when some people aren't. And take that into your heart. 
and just start spreading that energy to other people you love. Imagine and touching their lives. They don't even need to know. Just people you're touching from your energy, feeling so grateful, so happy, so alive, so free, so appreciative, and just say thank you. Two of the most powerful words you can ever use are thank you because they open up the gateway to abundance. And just take that in. Feel so happy and so appreciative. And just feel that in your heart right now. And now, from this amazingly beautiful state, from your heart, not your head, don't think, feel, from your heart, ask your heart to go back to that stressor that you totally forgot about. Go back to that stressor and ask your heart to complete the following sentence. In this stressful situation, all I need to remember is blank. In this situation, all I need to say is blank. In this stressful situation, all I need to do is blank. And ask your heart to complete that sentence because it already knows, doesn't it? It already knows the answer of what you have to do next. You can open your eyes and come back on camera. But how many of you found something real from that? How many of you felt some sort of direction from that in the last couple minutes? And if you didn't, it's okay. Do this when no one else is around. Some people still want to suffer. There's other techniques. There's other things you can feel. And at any moment in time, guys, there, just like uh, G said here, she's still lost. There's other ways to feel this. Sometimes it feels really, really good to suffer. But what we need to realize is that you have one shot here. One. That's it. And most people go through life trying to stay safe, never really going for it. You are not that person. You're not. Life can change at any time. Your clock on life is ticking. At any moment, it can run out. You do not control the length of your life, but you do control its depth and its meaning. Your life will change the minute you decide that you no longer want to suffer. That's it. Like What you have to do is take your pain and make it mean something empowering. I took the pain of my past and turned it into an amazing tool for people to reach their full potential. You were not meant to experience mediocrity. You were meant to feel fully alive every single second of every single day. And I can actually teach you how to do that. You're exactly where you need to be to learn what you need to learn, to live the life that you're meant to live. Remember where you are right now, you're supposed to be there. It is not wrong. And when, you, when you're grateful for it, that's when the solutions come. But all you have to do to radically change everything is to make this part of who you are. And when you do, game over. Can you imagine how your business, your marriage, your bank account, everything would change if you learned how to make this who you are? If this was how you responded to situations? Because by the way, that person you felt when feeling truly, deeply grateful, that was the real you. That was you that wasn't dominated by fear. Everything else is fear and conditioning. So if you know in your heart that getting to this point of learning how to make this your default setting is something that you'd like to learn and you just know that's what's holding you back. If it's okay with you guys, I'd just like to take two minutes and share about an opportunity that, uh, that Jacqueline and Megan and I have prepared for you guys uh, to learn how to do that. And if you say no, that's totally cool. No pressure here whatsoever. But if you've been pushing so hard for a goal and it feels like it's getting further away, and you don't know what's stopping you, and you have all the trainings, everything, but it feels like it's not working, or even if you are successful, it feels hollow and empty, and you don't know why. You don't know what's stopping you from feeling that fulfillment and success, and most importantly, happiness. I've created a course that will break through all of it, and I mean all of it. There are, there are 400 plus Beachbody coaches in this program. The reason you feel stuck is because you have inner conflict. That's it. Inner conflict that you need to change, negative self-talk, limiting beliefs, lack of worth. You hear the cliches, change your thinking, change your life, but how do you do that? This course teaches you how to be happy, how to attract success instead of repel it. And because your leaders are amazing, we have arranged an amazing discount on this program that like, let's say we, we sign up as a, and we keep signing up and enrolling at the end of the promotional period, I'll even increase that discount based on the final tally of people that have enrolled. It's incredible. And that's for payment plan and full pay options available, guys. Um, so even if things are tight, there's still a way to make this work. And by the way, if things are tight, whether it's through me or through another personal growth expert that you trust more, um, that's exactly why you need to invest in your growth. You won't find one successful person that says otherwise. Um, don't take that for pressure here, but if that's something that you feel is stopping you, 
that's why you need to find something you can connect with. And I have a 60 day guarantee on this as well. You guys know who Jen Richardson is? 15 Star Diamond Coach Million Club member. She says, and I quote, Appreciation Academy is the missing link that every beach body coach needs to finally see success in their business. Micah Folsom, rock star, two time 15 Star Diamond Coach, says, and I quote, If you're doing all the things and you don't know why you're not successful yet or happy yet, you absolutely need this program. And I can go on and on with testimonials. I don't share it to impress you, I share it to impress upon you that this will get you unstuck. It won't just affect your business, this is life coaching. That's what this is. It affects everything. It rips away the layers of pain, preventing you from being the person you're meant to be. It is not a business training. That will not work until you master what goes on up here, and especially in here. It's how you finally believe in yourself, and it's how you finally live every day with a smile on your face, and I will not disappear in you guys. So, if you felt something real, and you believe the concept that business will not create, uh, that success will not create happiness, but rather happiness creates success, and you've been, if you've been living in a memory that says, you know what, I don't believe I'm enough, but I want to, um, I highly encourage you to do this. So if you'd like to do it, if you'd like more information, head to bradbizjack.com slash team call, and you'll be able to learn more about the program. Again, that's bradbizjack.com slash team call. Both these guys are going to share this information um, in your team pages after this. Um, but uh, there's like a little opt-in form that helps me track where people come from. The next page has all the information on it. So guys, thank you so much for the privilege of being here tonight. Um, it's an honor to serve you guys, and I really hope to see an Appreciation Academy, but I'd love to turn it back to you guys, and you can just share your takeaways or why you think this is a good idea or whatever else you feel is, is right, but thank you guys so much for having me tonight. Thank you so much. That was seriously incredible. I'm a huge, huge Tony Robbins fan, so um, I went to UPW. My um, Alyssa actually took me for my elite gift one year, so I totally was on the same page as a lot of the things you were saying. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important. I feel like, especially with the business that we're in, it is so important that we invest in ourselves. You know, that's what we are telling other people to do when they're signing up with us, right? Um, but yeah, running a business is like a whole nother level. So I could not agree more. And I actually, I reached out to a few coaches once after you approached me. Um, I said, hey, has anyone had Brad speak on a call? And Jed Richardson actually said um, that you had spoke to her team. I think she said like 40 coaches signed up or something like that, like a lot of coaches. But she's like, they literally were on fire after your training. So I was like, okay, I'm really, really excited. So I'm really excited to look into it. And yeah, I can't wait. Thank you again. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate that. Absolutely. You're amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I think, I mean, Jacqueline very much summed up. I totally agree. It's definitely, um, I was, I'm in the same group as her, so I feel exactly the same. Um, I know that Jen has had a lot of people come through this and they know that this is like something they need just to get that momentum going. And I can tell you guys one thing is that in this business, momentum is so key. You need it, and when you get it, that's like what makes you unstoppable. And this is something that can give you that momentum to move forward. Um, and that's where you have to ask, like, is your e-brake on? What is? Why is your e-brake on? You know, that's what Brad was asking. Why you have the emergency brake on? Why? You know, and so where do you have it on, and why do you have it on? So it's a lot of questions. And again, like, there's just so many takeaways on my notes. I can't even go through them. But uh, we will post the links for you guys to check out the Academy. There's obviously no pressure, but there's just, um, there was a ton of value from this call. We are very thankful for Rod for joining us. And um, hopefully we'll get to have him again in the future. So thank you so much. I will post the recording. I will send it to both Jacqueline and to Rod. And thank you for joining us, guys. And for my team, thank you for coming on an off night earlier than yeah. usual because my team's like all jacked up my team's like what's going on all right. <laughs> thank you guys all right guys have a great night and thank you brad thanks Bye, brad